In this lab, practice deadlock in the philosopher dining problem using Windows API and uh, C Sharp. We have two tasks. The first task using the template dining philosophers.c written in Windows API simulate the deadlock scenario that five philosophers dining 10 rounds so that you can uh, add more philosophers and uh, run more rounds. Here we just uh, use five philosophers and then uh, 10 rounds. The second one, we do the same, simulate the same scenario with C Shop in another uh, template, Dining Philosophers C.CS. Then we have a real question about the bank's algorithm. First, let's uh, create a folder to hold all the contents we are going to uh, generate today. Lab 06. Again, in this uh, course companion uh, materials you cloned during the first uh, week. You can right click, open git bash here, and use git pull to download any uh, updated uh, materials. Right now you go to the labs, lab 06, the code, so copy these two, copy everything. And paste it here. Here's a reference solutions for the review question. So once you are done, you may compare your solution with these uh, reference solutions. Okay, now let's open Visual Studio Developer command prompt. Copy this folder. CD right click, paste here. There are you see the files and the folders we just copied. First let's try the Windows API program. There is a dining philosophers.c. We use a compiler MD Learning philosophers to see to compare it is a multiple thread program. Okay, you see it's uh, generated. Again, we would like to open this uh, folder with a uh, Visual Studio code, so we can uh, have a look on the source code. Here is the source code, how to compile it, how to run it, uh, where I got this program. There's a link, you can go to this link to see how to, using, how to use semaphore objects. We know semaphore is used for synchronization. Here, I define the n file. This n represents the number of philosophers. This is uh, how many rounds, 10 rounds. And each philosopher, during the simulation, they will take some time to eat, some time to think. And, and this is sloth. Sloth, you know, the movement, movement of a sloth is very slow. We just simulate the philosopher. The interval between the two movements, the philosopher pick his uh, right chopstick. Then pick his or her left uh, chopstick, and these are slots time interval between those two pick up. 
Here we have a uh, file chopsticks. This philosopher is the thread function, which means what a thread is going to do. Here for this uh, round, each philosopher will uh, act 10 rounds, right? or equals rounds, inside this uh, thread function. You can see what a philosopher is going to do. Here, philosopher is thinking, then sleep. We use this sleep to simulate thinking. The philosopher is trying to pick up his uh, left chopstick. So it will wait for the sink object, wait for this chopstick, and uh, wait for uh, infinite times. Here you can see this infinite time. If the chopstick is available, the philosopher picked up his uh, left chopstick. Now, these two those compare, run, observe, describe your observation, comment, outline, 47, these slots. Compare, run, observe, describe your observation, and explain the difference between these two uh, execution, which means before we comment out this line. or and after coming out this line. Here you see between these two movements, pick up the left chopstick, pick up the right chopstick, there is a sloth. And I wait for the availability of the right chopstick. If it's available, we put it out. The philosopher pick up his left chopstick, pick up his right chopstick. So pick up his uh, left chopstick is here. Uh, you see this one is uh, duplicated. You should comment out this one. Because we want to see pick up his left chopstick is here. So we comment out this uh, line 50 file. Pick up his red chopstick. Then philosopher has two chopsticks. And uh, we use another sleep to simulate dining. Right? Philosopher is dining now. And the philosopher then, after he finished uh, eating, the philosopher put down his uh, right chopstick and put down his uh, left chopstick. And it will release the semaphore. So, which means make the chopstick available to others. Here we decrease the number of rounds. We will simulate 10 rounds. In the main program, we just create these uh, semaphores, create chopsticks as semaphores. Then we create the philosopher threads. Here we create uh, the threads. Right, we have five philosopher, five chopsticks. So we create n and it's five, five threads. And here actually you see uh, we passed, we passed this uh, data array, right? We passed the data array to the threads. We do have an uh, argument passed to the thread. Here, no thread function arguments. This comment is not right. Then, we wait for all threads to terminate. Once uh, all threads are terminated, we say the philosopher's party is over and the release or close the Threads close the semaphores. So here we do pass the parameters to the to the to each stress. Right? 
We pass this data array. Actually, it's one zero one two three four. Pass parameter to stress. So this parameter in the in the thread function, you can see we get it uh, from this is used, right? Is used in this example. We get it to get an ID, but this ID is not the true thread ID. It's the logical ID we specified here. We specified as zero one two three four, right? We specified here. Oh, this is a dining philosophy program. What the simulates? you are required to do is here. So first let's uh, compare this one with slots. So we can compare it again, but we specify the output file name, call it dining philosopher with slots dot exe has been deprecated here this option O has been deprecated and will be removed in a future release so how do we specify the output file name we use CL to find the help. How do we specify the output file name? Here is the first, uh, you see these options, right? Optimization, code generation. So we need to press enter to continue to find uh, which one is for here, output file. For that uh, out profile, which one is for the exe file? Fe, we use this one. Name, execute profile. With this S Fe. Okay, now we know uh, we need what we need to specify this one. Use F E F E. Now you see now there is no warnings. Then we comment out this uh, line seventeen. Save it. This time we compare it, we say this one is a without. Without, let's use a W O. W O, without. Maybe upcase to make it a more of a wheels. Please remember after you comment out, you need to save it, and else save it. Otherwise, you will get the same result as the previous one. Okay, now both situations we compared, now we can run it to see uh, maybe it's better you open two command prompt window to run it because only the com compilation we need this development developer command prompt. If you run it, you just use uh, your normal, com normal command prompt. Is, uh, is uh, sufficient. You just uh, open another command prompt window, and one you run the the one with slots, the other one without slots. So you can control C, CD, right click, paste here. Now let's use this one to run the one with slots. Dynamic philosophers with slots.exe. 
an advantage. Is sinking, is sinking, follows of 0, 1 to 3, 4 is sinking. He's trying to pick up, pick up his left chopstick, pick it up, and so on. You can see uh, they keep running, but we didn't see uh, those rounds. Maybe we print out the round number, it will look better. Here yeah, three zero two one four. All these five philosophers currently they are all trying to pick up their right chopstick. In this case, as we discussed during the lecture, is a deadlock. Right? Every philosopher is trying to pick up their right chopstick and they possessed their left chopstick. But uh, here you can see, right? Pick up his left chopstick three. Pick up his left chopstick four. Uh, here zero. Pick up his left chopstick. So everyone picked up his uh, left chopstick. So you can see these things is trying to pick it up here pick it up his left uh, chopstick now you see if a philosopher pick up his uh, left uh, chopstick but his uh, movement is quite slow which means after some time trying to pick up his right chopstick then we may run into a that lock. Here you see that lock. None of them can continue. They stopped. If without slots, here, dining philosophers without slots.exe. And let's see whether we can complete this simulation. Even in this case, it's still possible to get into a deadlock, but it's uh, far more unlikely than this situation with the slots. How could we solve this one? You can refer to our lecture. During our lecture, we discussed three ways to solve this uh, deadlock problem is not required. You are only asked to show these two situations and explain why, or explain, describe your observation. So it looks like maybe it's better we print out the round number. Here we didn't see the round number, so we don't know how far they have proceeded. So let's uh, let it run. Here we see where could we add the round number. Here the round number is inside the thread function, right? Inside the thread function, we can print out this number R. Here, so we print out here. In this case, it will show us round 0, round 1, round 2, and so, and so on.
and maybe is also better at the philosopher. Philosopher in this round, so we need to add another the PID or the philosopher ID. Control S, save it. Okay, now let's have a look here. We are still running this uh, without slots. And this one is a deadlock. We know this is a case. Totally, we have five philosophers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And they are all trying to pick up the right chopstick and possess the left chopstick. So, how do we stop this? You press Ctrl C as we did many times. Can you see? Stop it, because we know it, it fall into a deadlock. Okay, now let's compare this again. This one uh, without slots. Press Enter. Okay, it's a uh, Compiled, and you see this uh, previous one. The philosopher's party is over, which means it uh, it runs successfully to the end. But it uh, still could uh, happen because we didn't solve the deadlock problem. But you see, in this case, it's far more unlikely than this uh, case with slots. Okay, I just show you uh, this one. Okay, let's run it here. You will see a round number show up. Right, philosopher zero in round ten. Oops, in round ten, this is not right. Let's control C, stop it. So because the round number in this program, we decrease this round number. So, how do we? Uh, Show the correct round number we we will use. We know the total rounds, right? Minus this R. Rounds is ten. Right? Minus is R. R start from ten. Then at the beginning it equals ten. Ten minus ten is zero. At the end R equals zero. Then ten minus zero is uh, ten. So so this way you will see the correct round number. Maybe countdown is also a good idea. Round 10, 9, 8, right? just like, like the launch a rocket. Okay, let's uh, just let it uh, round down, not round up. Okay, just leave it like this. So in your solution, please add this line to make it more readable. You only need to generate two executable files by comment this line. Now it becomes a line of 48, not a line of 47. One case is a comment out, the other case is a uncomment, just as I demonstrated. Now it is a program for the Windows API. Now for the next one, we use this uh, template Daniel Philosophers 2.cs. Here are the references. If you want to learn more, to op please open these references. How to run it, how to compare it. Yeah, you can see these uh, instructions. These two programs, they are, they are almost identical, just uh, implemented in different languages. We can see the number of philosophers and the uh, rounds. We also have eat, sync, and slots. So you know uh, where we need to uh, modify, uh, modify this. This program here you see a uh, class dining philosophers 
this func is the thread function. In the main program, in this one, we create a file threads. Here, the to do again, you, you are asked to comment out this slot line. The first case, you don't comment it. The next case, you comment it out. Observe and uh, explain the difference. Compare, run, observe, describe your observe, and explain the difference. And at the end, you can see I've recreated those threads. We start the party. Here we start these threads. Then we wait until all threads terminate. The philosopher's party is over. OK, now let's uh, add a line to show the runs. Philosopher is not is not this time in round. Right, this all is wrong. This PID is the philosopher ID. Again, now this line becomes a uh, line 67. Maybe I just uh, moved up. It's still 66. And I save it. Now we compare it. Here we need to CD. Here, pay attention, you are still inside the developer command prompt. CD go up, there are CD to that CS, C sharp, right? Now you see that dining philosopher 2. Again, how do we specify the output file name? CSC, we use a question mark like this to find how to specify the output file name. We can scroll up. You see code generation, resources, input files, output files. Here we use this uh, one dash out. In that uh, C, uh, C compiler, it uses uh, forward slash fe column with the file name. Right? You see different compiler, the syntax are usually different. Uh, dash out. CSC compare our dining philosophers to the CS dash out. First uh, is a dining philosopher with slots, right? Dining philosophers with that is user upcase with slots. Exe. There you see it's done. You can use DIR to show the result. And now let's uh, comment on that line 66 and save it. Ctrl S, save it. Go back. Now we compare it again. But this time, we say it's a result, result slot.exe. Use DIR. Right, these are the outputs. OK, now, again, we run the slot version here.
التاني اوبس تاني فلاسفرز هي ويز سلاس تيس تيس واشن ويز سلاس نو وي برايز اندر تو ران ليت فلاسفر از كامين ران زيرو ران وان هي از the water is uh, increase run for okay in the other window terminal window we run okay we need to cd to that cs folder we run that tiny philosophers result slot story exe Yeah, we run this uh, two programs. Now you will see it looks like they're stuck here. Trying to pick up and right, right, right. Here one is trying to pick up the right. Zero is trying to pick up the right. Two is trying to pick up. Three is trying to pick up the right. Four is trying to pick up the right uh, chopstick. It looks like they all possessed their. Uh, left chopsticks and uh, trying to pick up their right chopsticks so a uh, deadlock happened and they're stuck here in rare case you may not have a deadlock in this uh, situation but uh, it's very really likely you will you can see in round four uh, oops then round the turn zero one two three oops is it still counted down round the turn round the uh, Nine, but you see it's just in round to turn is the first round they stuck right that that lock happened in the first round because we count down here you can check the code we count down or count up so we see this is a count down minus minus r is count down okay this one with Slots. Uh, that lock happened, and in this one without the slots, you see the floss of party is over ten rounds is done. So this is a very unlikely uh, version. The we are going into a dead lock, but please uh, pay attention. The dead lock is not solved in both cases. How to solve it? Refer to our lecture. We discussed the three methods to solve the deadlock. How to solve it is not required. You just uh, think uh, about it by yourself. In this case, why is likely run into deadlock? Because each philosopher pick up their left uh, chopstick, but they didn't. Pick up the red chopstick right away, so it uh, leaves some time for others to pick up their red chopstick. So it's a uh, very really likely run into a deadlock. Actually, in this case, it's uh, definitely run into a deadlock. Okay, now this is stuck, you need a corner C to stop it. So in your report, for this version, you, you need to show this deadlock. And in this version, you need to show the philosopher party is over. And you also need to explain the difference and explain why. And I'll tap corner C to stop it. Okay, we are done the program part. Uh, the tasks. So you need to uh, pay attention to this one. Compare, run, observe, describe. The real question practice this Banks algorithm. We have demonstrated an example during the lecture. This is an easy question, but you need to write it uh, clearly. 
how do you write it clearly? You can use table to represent these uh, metrics, or just use a uh, if you use a word, Microsoft Windows uh, use a word Office Word. There is a formula editor, so you can input type the metrics. Certainly, in this uh, Libre Office writer. It also ha has the formula editor. So for this question, number one, what's the content of the matrix need? So you can write the matrix need. It equals the matrix expected or the max max number of resources each process needs, right? Each process request or expected. So matrix uh, max minus the matrix uh, allocated matrix here allocated for this allocation so now it uh, equals here how do you insert formulas you can see this formula right? insert formula here you can choose matrix here, let's see which one is matrix. Brackets. Matrix is usually like this. Right? You can use this uh, format, it's up to you. So, left or right. But how do I supply this, uh, this number? Here, yeah. we need uh, several columns. I want to find a, a matrix. Let's see whether we have a template. Formats. Attributes. Okay, it looks like it. I don't have a convenient one. So we use these uh, brackets. But these brackets, how do we uh, add more columns? For example, like this. Certainly, so you can uh, use a table. It looks like this one is uh, not convenient to use. So uh, we will uh, not use those things. So I use a table here. For a table you see we have uh, four columns and uh, five rows, right? So the matrix is max, you can draw a table, four columns and uh, five rows. Actually we need uh, six rows, six rows and uh, File columns for the title. Now this one is quite uh, is quite big. And type uh, A B C D. Oops. Here you type uh, P0 to P4. Matrix max. 
zero zero one two to the first line second uh, first row second row is a uh, one seven five zero one seven five zero P two two three five six So you can draw like this to make it uh, more readable. Then use those uh, math formula. Just add uh, another table to the right side. I, I try to add a minus to the right side. I cannot add there. So you can find uh, how to use it. Then we minus the matrix allocated here. This. Uh, Matrix allocated. You can copy this one. Ctrl C paste here. You minus this uh, allocated uh, matrix zero zero one two. Here is a uh, one. Oops. One zero zero Okay, you can double check it. And now you can equals the result. Right? The result is a need matrix. So you minus uh, cells by cells. Zero minus zero, you get a zero. Here, zero minus zero, you get a zero. 1 minus this 1, you get a 0 here. And 2 minus this 2, you get a 0 here. So you can uh, find the other numbers by yourself. Then you can check after you're done. You can check with this uh, reference solution. Here, zero, 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 seven, five, zero, and so on. So these are value of the matrix need for the processes from P0 to P4. So in your report, please uh, write it formally and uh, readable. Follow following our report template. So the next question it asks you, is the system in safe state? As we discussed during the class. This means whether you can find a water, execution water of P0 to P4, such that each process can be satisfied with the resources, the available resources, and complete their execution, right? 
So you need to, uh, if you want to do it manually, you need to uh, iterate all the permutations of P0 to P4 until you find uh, a permutation that they can be uh, completed with a available resource. Here, the system is in a, the reference solution is in a safe state with the matrix uh, variable equal to this one. And either process P0 and P3 could run first. Once P3 completes its execution, it releases the resources which allows all other existing processes to run. So P0, you can see P0, it, it expected so much and uh, it's allocated so much, which means it's, uh, it's already satisfied. So P0 can start uh, its execution. Once it's uh, complete, its resource is returned to this available matrix, right? To the available resource list. Or you can also start from P3. You can see P3, only this uh, type C resource, it need two more. File minus three is two, right? Two, two more type C resource. But you see inside this available resource, here we have two C. So these two instances of C can be allocated to P3. So P3 can also be executed as the first uh, process. Once it's done, all its resources allocated here. The allocated resource are returned back to the available resource. Then you run the next one. When you run the next one, you will see the available resource are increased because the record from those uh, processes completed. So you need to go through the whole process. Do it manually, it's uh, prone to make a uh, mistake so, as we demonstrated in the lecture, there is a program you can use from Wikipedia, and I uh, adapted that program and put here in our lecture. In this lecture, is uh, module 02, deadlock bank here. This program, and can you see, copy the to our lab created today, lab 06, control V, put it here. Please pay attention, you need to install NumPy if you want to use this bank.py as I have done during the lecture. So if you don't know how to install NumPy, please Google it, how to install NumPy on Windows. Now I just want to run it to let you have a look. So I will open that uh, Python IDE. Right, there's a Python IDE. Then open the file. In this uh, lab 06. Bank. Okay, it's uh, open here. Now we can uh, run it. How to install your NumPy? You need to install it first. And you may follow this uh, instruction here. Put some instruction here. Go to the installation folder of your Python the scripts. If your version is different, you may need to change the version number. Then run this uh, PIP to install NumPy. All right, now I run the program. No module name NumPy, oops, on this machine. So NumPy, I didn't install it. So I need to follow this. Uh, I need to follow this. Uh, instruction, open a terminal window as an uh, administration account, command prompt is also called terminal window. 
All right, now as administrator, now I need to cd to that c program files Python scripts. Then run that pip pip dot three dot. Oops, I don't have pip three. If you use DLR, you can see I have a yeah I have a pip three dot nine dot exe pip three dot nine dot exe install numpy. Now you see the installation started. Okay, it's uh, completed. You may ignore those uh, warnings as we discussed this one during the lecture. Now we can launch it again. Here, number of processes. Totally, we have a uh, file num processes, right? Number of resource type, we have four, A, B, C, D. And uh, currently, uh, current available uh, resources is one, file, two, zero. One, you use empty space to de as a delimiter to separate these numbers. One, file, two, zero. Now I'm currently uh, allocated for process one. There is a problem. Is start from one, one, two, three, four, five. But here start from zero. Is okay? You just need to uh, remember, or you change the program by yourself. So here, one means zero. Is the allocated is zero, zero, one, two, right? Here for this one, is zero, zero, one, two, zero, zero, one, two, and P one. Is one zero zero zero. Then the next one, the next one, zero six three two. The last one, zero zero one four. Price under maximum demand from process from this here. This is the max. Matrix zero zero one two one seven five zero two three uh, five six then zero six five two the last one zero six five six price under you can see the state is safe, and uh, here is the execution order. And uh, the first, it uh, print out the scenario overview. Total available here. You can see the total available is the resource currently available, together with all those allocated. Right? You add them together is the total available. The current available, one file to zero. The current uh, allocated. You can use this one as a double check whether you have any typos. Right? Compare with this uh, here. Maxim, maximum expected. Yeah, this matrix. Now you can see uh, process one received resource zero zero zero. This one is process zero. Is already satisfied, so it only needs zero zero zero. So it. Uh, Running complete, then to return all its resource. Which resource is uh, the allocated zero zero one two, right? So the currently available, you add this one to this one, we will get one five three two. Here the two add to this zero, we get two. This one add to this two, you get three. So the current available becomes one five three two. Then process three. Received a resource. Here, this res received resource is what it needed, right? 
here for this P3, it need one. Oh, here this three, this three means four is this one, right? Is this one? How much it need? It need one zero zero two. Process three receive the resources. Uh, wait a minute here. One zero zero two. When you check this uh, allocation, this uh, max expected here is zero zero. Why I, I get a uh, one here? Oops, we we start this one start from zero. This one start from one. So three is a uh, two, right? The process three is this process two. You here you two minus one, you get a one. And a three minus three is zero five minus five zero six minus four is two. So it need one zero zero two. Then because this is what it uh, need, and uh, uh, currently available is this much. Certainly, this one the need is satisfied, right? So it's running complete and return all its resource. Then the current available becomes so much. Until so on, you can check all this stuff, and it's safe. It's done. The third question: It was a request from P1 arrives for zero four two zero. Can the request be granted immediately? Here, this imagery does not mean uh, you run P1 uh, right away. It still, you need to uh, think about them as a whole. You just only need to uh, change the request from P1 here. The previous it request is so much. Right? The request is 0012. Now it becomes 0420. So you only need to change this one to zero four zero, and uh, sync it up again. Whether you can find a order to complete all these uh, processes, if so, you can say the request can be granted immediately. So here is a little bit confusing. It does not mean you run this P one right away, granted uh, immediately. It only means Again, for all these processes, where you can find a uh, order to complete all of them, you again you can use this uh, program. Use this program to check whether it can be six to be uh, completed. And I I had a run this program and I found that it can be done. So and I get this. Uh, Reference solution: The request can be uh, granted immediately, and the value of the matrix is then become this one of the matrix available. One one zero zero. And one what any other process can be finished in this world: P zero, P two, P three, P one, P four. It, uh, here the request for this zero four two zero zero four two zero. You use this one to minus this one, right? Here one minus zero is uh, one five is larger than four, two is larger than two. So it's uh, satisfied. P one it uh, requests so much. We have so many available, so it's uh, satisfied. So if we Grant the resource to be P, to P one right away. We still left so much. We still left one one zero zero. Here one minus zero is one. Five minus four is one. Two minus two is zero. Right. So P one can be granted immediately and run P one right away. You can run P one right away. Certainly you can try another order. Like this. Okay, this uh, lab we are done everything.